So this is an overview of how I'm planning to implement my slip ring in my um, R2 and how I'll be writing power and signal through the slip ring and, um, and such. I haven't wired anything just yet, but I'm going to try and go over you know, the various components and how eventually they'll all interconnect. So um, this is the slip ring. As you can see, it's a pretty small package. Um, it's a, um, a demo unit that I, I received about a week or two ago. Uh, it has 18 circuits. Um, some of you may be using 24 or 12. Um, I'm hoping to do a small offering of um, the 12 channel or 12 circuit ones in a couple of weeks um, if this prototype works out okay. Um, so for most people, I think you know 12 circuits will probably be enough. Um, and I know certainly probably for you know, my needs that'll be enough. So let me go over some of the components. So I have a, um, it looks like a serial connection or a D-type connection here. It's actually high density. I'm not sure if you can see that. There's about 26 pins in there. I'll be using about 80, well, I'll be using the 18 of them. Um, the reason for the high density is that it's slightly smaller form factor than like a 25 pin um, serial connection. And so it'll allow me to cut a smaller hole in my top uh, frame ring to drop it through. So this will all be removable if I need to either upgrade it or replace it at some point. Um, so that's either end of the slip ring. You know, you can see the, the wires inside there and that'll actually, there's about 18 wires there and that'll be soldered into the, the little cups at the end on the inside there. I'm not sure you can see that. Um, so let me think now. So in addition to that we have various other components. So it has to obviously has to connect to something to pass the power up. So I'm going to make these little boards up with corresponding um, female um, male versions of the, the sockets that these will plug into either side. So I'm going to have two of those, one in the dome, one in the body. So this little blue connection hidden here, that'll accept my 12 volts coming from my battery. And then these little tabs here, these three pin connections here, um, will have little wires running to my RC receiver. So the standard, you know, for Tabba type little connections. And that'll um, then be wired across via the board into the little connection here. So that's all I'm going to be routing up into the dome is probably about six or eight of the channels, just in case um, my, my transmitter has ten channels. So I'm going to probably route up six or eight of them. Probably not going to use that many of them, but I'm going to plan on that. The majority of the signals then on the on the left will be for power. I'm probably going to use allocate uh, three for ground and three for the 12 volts, so it gives me about six amps of power. And then um, one other thing to note: so on these little connections that route from your transmitter, um, or, you, or rather your receiver, you send out a rec receiver. You notice that there's three wires. Um, two of them for power, typically 5 volts or 6 volts. Um, and the, the third one then is the, the, in this case, a yellow cable or a bit of wire. That's the, that's the signal that's going to come in. I'm gonna, only going to write the, that signal. I'm not going to write up the 5 volts because I'm going to recreate that in the dome. There's no point in writing that up um, and taking extra channels uh, or circuits going through the slip ring just for power. For Basically, they're all going to be using the same power anyway. Um, if it works, then great. Um, if it doesn't, the fallback position is just write up one of the five volt lines up and then reconstitute it on the other side. But so let's let's hop over to the other side then and see how that's going to work. So you can see I have a little servo connected, same set of D cup that will connect from the other side of the slip ring in the dome. This little uh, um, IC here, it's a 7805. That'll change my 12 volts that I'm going to be passing in through here. No, it's going to come. You know, it's going to come here, through here, all the way through the slip ring, into this side, then in the dome. On a couple of these, three of these channels here, it'll be 12 volts coming in. I'm going to step it down to 5 volts, and then route it back along the 5 volt rail or pins to all the the RC servo connections. And then each of the eight, six or eight channels I'm going to be passing up, then to the dome. They all come in on the, on the third pin here, so the you know the first two, the ground and the five volts, will be recreated from the twelve volts that I'm passing up, and then the 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 signal for the the servo will be on the third rail there, so that those will plug in there, and we could plug additional ones in when we need to, and then at the back then will come my twelve volts to run to all my other 
things in the in the dome. I also have tw need for 24 volts in my dome. Um, I didn't want to, you know, um, have additional batteries allocated for 24 volts. It complicates charging. So what I've also bought is this little circuit here, and it, what it does is it allows me to step up um, 12 volts up to 24 volts, or anything between 24 volts or 12 volts and 48 volts. Um, with a, t a turn of a dial, so that's going to power my um, real logic flashes. So the only thing I'm going to pass, so let's summarize then. So the only thing I'm going to be passing up is 12 volts coming up here through the circuit, and then each of the one pins, is the single pin for this, the signal coming up from my RC stuff, that'll go through and up, and then 12 volts at the back, um, which will be routed to my um, a version of a power distribution board to give me 5 volts, 9 volts and obviously 12 volts. I'm going to be using this to give me 24 volts for my uh, real logic and that's pretty much it. So I guess I just have to solder it up now and uh, test it out but I, I'm, I'm pretty confident it's going to work. Thanks.